everyone and welcome back to the second tutorial. I hope that you like my first tutorial in which I showcase how to properly translate the Minecraft settings into World Machine. For this tutorial we will be making this desert terrain. It has some desert vibes, it has some Badlands vibes and you can really make a cool custom Minecraft biome with it. In order to make a good Minecraft biome it's always important to have a good reference. The reference for this terrain will now be up on the screen and as you can see the dunes match quite well. It is also important to note or to see which terrain comes first. For this terrain it is visible that the desert comes first and afterwards the rocks are placed upon it. We start the terrain by making the desert. We do this by using a Voronoi and just leaving it on the style F1. There are multiple styles and all of them offer different approaches for different projects. Personally, I really like the F2 F1 since it creates almost a crack-like structure. However, for this one, we will be working with the F1 and we, well, I think that we're going to put it on two kilometers. For now, it doesn't really matter how normalized the terrain is. You can see that the terrain is not fully normalized between 0 and 1, which in some cases might be very handy for natural devices. For instance, the strata device somehow works within a normalized range between 0 and 1. So if your terrain isn't fully normalized, you're losing out on a lot of strata layers. I think a lot of you didn't know that. For this, we will not be using any natural devices. I will cover that in a later tutorial, so I hope to see you there. But for now, we're going to use a filter, namely the clamp filter. The clamp filter can increase a height or rescale. For this one, we're going to rescale. So I'm going to drag the maximum lower, and I'm just going to look at my top left to see how high I want the dunes to be. I do not care now that it is under the water. So let's say I would like a range between 0 and 700. If I now press with my left mouse button on the blue part and drag it a bit, you can see that I fully changed height. I do not want any water holes, so I'm going to put it a bit higher. And of course I press close. Let's see how it looks. I really like this. However, as you can see with the top-down view, there are a lot of straight lines. So, there's a trick to get rid of the straight lines and to make the dunes a bit more wavy, you can say. We're going to use this by my favorite device, the displacement device. And you can have a lot of tricks with this device. So I heavily recommend to play around with it. Put some different generators in it, put some different filters through it. Just play around with it and you'll see that, there, that the options are limitless. However, for this one, we're going to use an advanced Perlin as the distortion angle. I'm not going to directly cover what distortion angle and distortion distance means. Again, play around with it a bit and you'll understand what it does. If I now put in the advanced purlin at the distortion angle and displace the terrain a bit, you can see that the terrain gets rather noisy and that the displacement is of quite large of a scale. We're going to change this by going into the advanced purlin, lowering the feature scale in order that there are more peaks and more peaks means more places where the distortion is being applied and since we want the waviness and not the noise we're going to lower the persistence so the noisiness gets reduced to smooth peaks now we go back into the distortion and just ever so slightly change the displacement as we can see the straight lines have now completely changed for these nice wavy curled lines. 
I think that the dunes for now without using any natural devices looks quite good. So let's move on to the, to the rocks. We will start with the rocks by using an advanced purlin. The advanced purlin is basically every terraformer's cheat code. The advanced purlin does so much and in combination with the displacement you have endless possibilities. So for now we're going to use the advanced purlin and we're going to put the style on billowy. Billowy in essence means that the terrain is a bit more round and not so rigid. Again, play around with these styles since even myself I do not fully understand all of them completely. Since we want a lot of rocks, uh, we want to have the feature scale a bit lower. You can now only see one big rock, so we're going to lower it to let's say this. 750 meters. The output will look something like this and in my eyes it's a bit too steep. You have a lot of complicated ways to make these peaks a bit more rounded or a bit bigger in base. However, I'm going to use the easiest one since it's tutorial 2 and we're still on the learning curve. I'm going to use a filter, expander and it exactly does what it says. The expander has multiple options, especially the filter types, Gaussian, linear slope and square, can be really interesting. The actions you find are expand max, shrink, open shrink, expand, close, expand, shrink. Especially the open and close one are really interesting. However, for now we're going to use the expand version. And we're going to put the distance to a value where we like the roundness of our rocks. I would say 250 meters is okay. You can also see why this is the easiest variation to do this, since if I increase the scale even further, everything will look the same. We do not want that, it's ugly, we're going to keep it at this, so we do still keep some variation here and there. Now we would like to add some terraces. What I always do is use a strata device, however, for all the work machine users, the terrace device is still really, really handy. So for now I'm going to use the terrace and in future tutorials I will be working with the strata device most likely. In the terrace device we have multiple options. Terrace method, number of terraces, terrace shape, terrace layering and some settings. I don't care about the settings all too much since you can make them yourself and for this tutorial I'll be working with the terrace method sharp. Simple would be really great for making masks since it's a hard cutoff and smooth I don't really like that much since it creates a bit of awkward terraces. Mathematically it makes sense but in the real world we don't really see a lot of smooth terraces so sharp it is. In previous versions of World Machine the number of terraces was always by default a bit lower. I really like that and I do not understand why they put it at 32. However, we're going to use 3 and for the terrace layering, you can see it in the top left, we put it at 8. This will already create very nicely looking terraces. To even amplify this, we're going to copy with Ctrl C and Ctrl V the device once again. We'll load it again and you can see that the terraces have been even amplified. Now a question to you is how do we normalize this a bit better so that we can combine it with our desert? The answer for that would be to just use another rescale. For now I've just copied it and you can see that these settings do not work on it so we're going to put it back up and I'm just going to Put it a bit down and just play, uh, play around with it a bit. Some settings will look better than others. And always keep in mind that we're going to paste the dunes on here. So I think that this would work. Let's combine the two ter terrains. And for that we're going to use the most simple way. We're going to combine them using a combiner. Select the first one, 
selected the second one and we're going to use the maximum method smooth max we're going to leave the smoothness at zero since it does some funky stuff that's not really well maskable so we're going to put the strength at one as we can see there are a lot of small rocks and just a couple of big ones i don't really like that so we're going to go back in the rescale for rescale device and we're going to increase some of them this is more what i like from this we would like a mask for both of them so let's do that another property of the combining device which i really like is the fact that we can combine the output and one of the two inputs and use the absolute differences this will make sure that all the differences that have been made to the dunes will get masked out so as you can see in this case it indeed shows we have added the rocks so we get the rocks back as a result we then use a selector just to select height for instance you could also re use a rescale on expand but i really like to use selectors for selecting certain types put the fall at zero the maximum all the way in the top and just the lowest value at 10 meters what this does is it will give you a map where all the rocks have been added to the terrain now to further enhance the terrain a tiny bit and to help smooth out the rough edges we will use one natural device i said that we won't be using any natural devices however it's not really using it it's just putting it in there so we will be using the thermal weathering and we're not going to touch it i will explain it further on however it is important to say that we're going to not use the output of the thermal weathering directly but we're going to smooth max it once again this makes sure because if you look at the top left the peaks get lower due to the thermal weathering and we don't really like that we like the tall peaks we like to have some height in the world so we're going to use another smooth max to completely find all the higher points and still keep them to the train what this device has done is as you can see around the edges it's not a sharp cutoff but it is nicely blended in now we would like to color it and since we already have the masks of the rocks it's quite easy we simply generate two colors one for the desert so i'm going to use a bit of a nice red desert and one for the rocks so i'm going to use a bit of a badlands look i'm going to combine these using an average you can also use a chooser however i really like to use combiners since they give you with all the options inside way more control of masks than where you would use a chooser i'm going to put the strength at one and as the mask input i'm going to use the rocks so in this case i would have the desert first and the rock second so if i have my average set all the way to one it is fully using the rocks color if i now were to switch these around so i have the desert as second and the rocks as first it will only use the desert color however since this is easier we're going to use this now we use the overlay device input the terrain input the color we render it and voila it looks a bit different since the colors are a bit different and we've used different seeds and perhaps different values but you can see that we got close to the result i hope that you like this tutorial i will be making more tutorials on youtube but i will also be uploading more exclusive and 
in-depth tutorials on my Patreon. So please check that out.